Hello, everyone, and welcome to the chapter 13 entitled Inner Space, our next to the last chapter for the History of Science course. And in it, you'll discover the discovery of the atom, its parts, and radiation, the people responsible for that. Uh, first, a couple important course notes. Uh, chapter 13, please read from pages 487 to 516. Due to a number of scheduling conflicts, we will not have a multiple choice sit down final, so there will be no final. Your paper number two will be due Tuesday, December 15th at 9 p.m. So paper number two, go to the blackboard for details, will be due December 15th. Your grade will be based on four assessments. Paper number one, the midterm, your Google Plus community postings, and paper number two, which is due on December 15th at 9 p.m. Um, also, I'd like to announce, and uh, I'd love for everyone in the course to join us for a light dinner and a show of 19th century scientific instruments on Tuesday, December 8th. It's a study day from 5 to 6.30 in room 665 at Gladfelter in the STEM Ed Network area, 6th floor Gladfelter. Please consider joining us. We'll have just some light sandwiches, uh, some drinks, some pretzels and chips and uh, we would love to have you there. It's from 5 to 6.30. I'll also post an announcement with all of this. Okay, let's get on to chapter 13. And as uh, we know, chapter 13 is called Inner Space. So we're talking a lot about the atom, what the atom is made of, the discoveries uh, that led to that. And one of the first things uh, that you'll read about is the invention of the vacuum tube by William Crookes. And this is a um, shot of William Crookes and his apparatus, uh, the cathode ray tube. And you can see the cathode section there on the left, the anode in the middle bottom. And what they're shooting is they're shooting cathode ray uh, rays at a uh, hinged object. And a shadow appears on the back of that hinged object. Believe it or not, this is the start of television. This is how television started. We'll talk a little bit more about that a little bit later. Uh, here's a picture of some of the app, uh, apparatus at the time that would have been used. You can see up in the top some cathode ray tubes and one just in front of the hand. And really this cathode ray tube led to the discovery of electrons. Uh, we didn't know what was shooting out of that cathode uh, until it was discovered and named the electron. It's where the word electricity comes from. Then you're going to read about William Rentgen and x-rays. Um, this is a picture, this is the original picture on the right there of his wife's hand and a ring. Uh, and uh, a famous quote from Rentgen, if the hand be held between the discharge tube and the screen, the darker shadow of the bones is seen within a slightly dark shadow image of the hand itself. For brevity's sake, I shall use the expression rays, and to distinguish them from others of this name, I shall call them x-rays, because really at that point, <laughs> they did not know what was causing it. They didn't know about radiation yet. Here's another um, picture of Renkin. Notice now we have Professor Renkin at work. Uh, in the big scheme of things now, science, which had always been up until the late 19th century, uh, a rich gentleman's hobby or vocation, now we're starting to hire teachers at the university level that would teach science. Now you could make a living out of science. Um, I'd like to take a short detour here and uh, talk a little bit about this. In the 1940s and 50s, shoe companies, even though the atomic bomb had been used in Hiroshima and Nagasaki to help end World War II, Shoe stores all over this country and in England had something called the Petoscope. And the Petoscope allowed you to jump or to walk onto this, look down, and x-ray your feet. You could see your toes wiggling underneath it. And shoe stores uh, all over the country were using this as a gimmick to get people in and say, we can give you precise diagnosis of uh, shoe size for your foot. Here's a certificate of shoe fitting data uh, uh, that at the time was handed out. One of the reasons I'm talking about this now is many times, and, and the discovery of radiation is a good example, uh, uh, the, the science leaps ahead of our ability to know how this affects the health of human beings. And for years after this, uh, up until I think the late 50s, uh, these types of machines were used in, uh, in shoe stores, uh, giving people lots of radiation they didn't need. 
Now, speaking of radiation, radioactivity and the discovery of radiation, this is Henri Becquerel. And one of the more famous pictures, uh, Becquerel was able to take a uh, piece of paper, photography paper, and expose it to material that had radiation coming out of it. And uh, it was his discovery that led to alpha, beta, and gamma rays. Um, here's another slide with Becquerel. The first notable use of emulsion plates, photography plates, uh, was done in 1896. And if you look at the diagram at the bottom there, you can see that they would place a radioactive element, um, usually uh, radium, a radium source of some, of some type, put it in there and expose it to a photographic plate, sometimes putting an object between uh, the radioactive element and the plate. Here's another uh, picture of Becquerel at the time in his lab. Of course, two of the most famous people, Marie and Pierre Curie, worked with radiation, and uh, you'll read all about that. Here's a picture of both of them. Pierre died early uh, from an accident. Marie went on to make lots of discoveries and win the Nobel Prize. Also, a little bit later on, uh, you'll read about Max Planck and Einstein and uh, their discoveries with light quanta and black body radiation and the existence of energy quanta. So uh, take a look at this. Uh, I think you'll find this reading enjoyable. And uh, our last chapter is chapter 14. That'll be posted next week. And uh, remember, December 8th, the first study day from 5 to 6.30 or 7. If you want to come by for some free food and see some 19th century um, histor history of science instruments, uh, microscope, spectroscope, uh, and uh, balances, uh, please stop by. It's only going to be for the history of science course. Thank you very much, and we'll see you next week for our last chapter.